TIFU by accidentally calling my employee a NSFW name for three years. So, let me set the stage. I'm an Australian who managed to score a sweet gig working at a resort on a tropical island in Thailand. I had 50 awesome staff members working under me, and, wanting to make a great impression, I took the time to learn everyone's names, both their formal names and their nicknames. Now, here's where the colossal screw-up comes in. One of my staff members had the nickname Moai, which I was told meant China girl. Eager to be friendly and relatable, I called her by her nickname for three whole years. Little did I know, I was actually calling her pubic hair due to the nuances of the Thai tonal language. For three long years, I unknowingly called this poor woman an NSFW name and nobody corrected me. Finally, one staff member let the truth slip and I was absolutely mortified. I had been walking around, blissfully unaware of the embarrassment I had been causing both myself and Moa. To say I was devastated is an understatement, TIFU big time by not fully understanding the tonal intricacies of the Thai language, and accidentally calling my employee a wildly inappropriate name for years. Learn from my mistake, folks. When in doubt, stick to formal names. TL, DR, got a job in Thailand, learned staff's nicknames, accidentally called a staff member, pubic hair, for three years due to a tonal language mishap. Mortified when I found out the truth. It's Tolkien, what did you think my name was? To be fair, nobody, including her, told you. Honestly, it sounds more like a prank on you to let that run that long unless there's a whole lot of other fucky a** going on. Hey, I won't sweat it too much. This kind of thing happens all the time when different cultures and languages meet. I won't be too surprised if her colleagues secretly get a kick out of the worst, this probably ranks as mildly offensive. Of course if you keep calling her that, it's another flip side equivalent of this would be an Asian innocently using the n-bomb in America. Given how prominently this word features in many movies, songs, games etc it is an easy mistake to make if you're not aware of the racial nuances. Don't most they's introduce themselves with their nicknames and expect you to use them? That's the impression I got when I worked with them for an event over there. It only would take a couple of weeks. Then after that has gone on too long and correcting off at that point would somehow be worse. That episode had me howling tears of joy. They retroactively changed those on streaming services. They went all out with the gaslighting. Fice have full legal names, Thai nicknames, which carry some kind of meaning, and some also have Western nicknames, Mimi, Nick, Matt, Johnny. Sometimes the Western names are, cute, words like cake, happy, donut, golf, pancake, putt putt, nine, tend to be chosen by parents, and generally students can elect to change their Western names as they see fit, as only the full legal names appear on transcripts. I worked in international schools there for six years. I love that they did this. Yep, especially considering that for example, if I recall correctly, in Korean, there is a word very close to the n-word in pronunciation, that means, you, or something like that. And I don't think that's even the only example. Also, something to remember for stories like this, when the two words sound very similar to each other in another language, it's going to be obvious to them what you meant. It sounds humiliating and ridiculous in English but only because the two words are so different that nobody could possibly confuse them. Yes, in Korean nigger, niga, means, you, niga, naga, means, me. There's na ye gay in Mandarin, literally means, that one, but it's often used as a placeholder in the same way we'd use, um, or, ah, uh, and in that context it's usually pronounced, na ye, which definitely can sound sus to American ears, edit, na instead of na. This is Thailand, nobody will correct you, too embarrassing and potential loss of face. Don't feel bad, I lived as an expat in India for 10 years and could never learn the language, but my son was fluent in three of them. Someone gave me the nickname, Modi, that he said meant jolly. I later learned, rather hurtfully, that it meant said, we moved and I was trying to get to know my neighbors and I was outside waiting for our driver to pick me up. Our next door neighbor walked by with her ass dog and I said something in bad Hindi like, Namaste, Bao Modi Chutia Hai, Na? I was trying to say, Hello, you have a really a dog, yes? 
She looked horrified and hurriedly walked away. My son walked out and asked what I said to mom, you really have to get some lessons or something. That's not good, you told her that her lady parts are very never did talk to her again. Because the joke is that it was token, but they're retconning all know it was token. They aren't making some great revelatory discovery, they're just over explaining the joke. Hey Toby, listen, who the asterisk hell is this Chandler? I work with a lot of Mexicans and the words for load and that are very similar. I was telling the guys to go a in the truck instead of go load the truck for five years. Until a new guy came and pulled me aside and explained how I was pronouncing it wrong. I turned to the rest of the crew, why didnt you guys tell me? To a chorus of laughter from him, well we always knew what you meant, I wanted to die. Ah, that's the joke. That's not really how it works in those countries. I'm not as familiar with this one, but in Indonesia they don't like to tell you bad news. So if you get a name wrong, or if they don't have the food you want at a restaurant, or if you make some minor social faux pas, they just won't say restaurant thing is actually super annoying. You go to a restaurant with all your friends, everyone orders, everyone gets their food except you, and you won't know why until you ask. I'm confused why you would ask someone if they have a dog though. That's the weirdest part about this story to me. Same situation here, I've been living, working in Thailand for 11 years. For the first five I was calling one of my team, whose name is Koi, Koi, as in the fish. It's actually pronounced, Goi. Koi, means a in Thai, or more specifically, slang for, cock. So yeah. Married to a Thai woman. Ordering food I accidentally ordered, stir-fried pig. And a friend meant to call his Thai wife beautiful but called her sad looking instead. This happens all the time with non face learning the Thai language. They should have corrected friend called wife, unlucky, and not sad. Yay, it's like a foreigner saying instead of fork. Nobody will care lol. That's the real truth here. Though I'm sure everyone chalked it down to bad pronunciation and knew exactly what the guy meant. Now put yourself on the opposite side of the situation you probably don't correct the pronunciation of people who are ESL for slightly wrong intonations. In many cases it's not even correctable later in life without a lot of effort. You can see why they might have let it slide. I know my pronunciation in other languages is abysmal it's just to be expected from most people. Who aren't career linguists or learning multiple languages from childhood. I wish my actual name was Pancake. That definitely threw me when I started carpooling with a friend and their dad and they would speak Chinese to each other in the car. It took me a couple weeks to ask him what they were saying. That was the funniest a I'd seen in a long time. Paraphrasing. What are you doing? Toby, I found out this is Chandler's office, so I'm trashing it. Wanna yeah. Kagger, Kargar, I'm guessing, if anyone is wondering smiley face. I used to travel to Mexico regularly for work and I know a tiny bit of Spanish and it was always very hot whenever I went there, so I did go around telling people, estoy muy caliente, thinking it meant, I am very hot. People always laughed and I just thought I was a funny until someone explained to me on my third or fourth trip that to say, I am hot, you say, tango calor, which literally translates to, I have muy caliente means I am very, and I used it as basically a greeting with everyone. For a long time because they always laughed. My boss has been calling me a hair for weeks. I thought it was a mistake at first, but at this point I'm too afraid to correct him. Yes that's exactly it. I'm turning red right now just thinking about it years later. The best part is that if you go back through the catalog on HBO Max and turn on the subtitles, everyone but Stan call him Tolkien, whereas Stan calls him Token. Their commitment to the bid was incredible. Oh no, someone said, thanks, instead of, thanks, instead of expressing the gratitude they mentioned a deadly war machine. I am Italian and I find it extremely hard to differentiate sheep from. They sound too similar and even knowing about it I am sure I pronounce them that happens when we engage in a second language. The main characters in Friends were all trash. Chandler fired Chris Parnell's character because it was easier than just facing the embarrassment of telling him that his name wasn't Toby. No, a better solution was to end the guy's gainful employment. I have two first names. I'll use Jamie Lee Curtis as an example. And when I first started uni, one classmate called me Jamie and the other called me Lee. A few days after school started I was hanging out with them and said I had to leave early so one of them goes, okay bye Jamie, 
and the other one asks, wait where's Lee? They thought we were two different people. Firing him is a lot funnier though. And you just called yourself. It's not as bad as it feels if an Eastern European would always say, shit the door, instead of, shut the door, with their heavy enough of an accent, especially if consistent. It might not even register as the other form of the of a Bostonian saying you don't immediately think they are pretending to be a raven. Ka. You hear it as, car. Greater than now put yourself on the opposite side of the situation you probably don't correct the pronunciation of people who are ESL for slightly wrong intonations know only that. But rarely do we take the mispronounced words for their literal meaning the best example I've seen is we've probably all heard someone say, tanks, rather than, thanks, but has anyone ever actually pictured a line of war machines? Typically our brains are so good at filling in context we don't even consider it. 